What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. In this video we have a stuck or seized clutch on a Honda CA160. It's been sitting and oftentimes on these older bikes the clutches will just get slammed tight and they will stall out the moment you hit that gear shifter. I'll show you guys what I mean. Clutch adjustment? Absolutely. One way I can verify that is back in the free play out of here until there's almost none. So that way I know that the clutch is being opened up for sure. So there's barely any free play at all. Same thing. Okay? The clutch is stuck. If I wanted to, you could. Flintstone yourself down the street and put it in the gear and you'll get rolling and sometimes what you can do to free it up in an emergency situation is while you're riding you can just hit that rear brake one time to kind of put a jolt on the system and sometimes that breaks the clutches up. So because the clutch is sticking obviously there's something going on with the clutch. If there was an adjustment issue then when I back that free play out to allow the clutch lever to fully open up that clutch basket probably might have went away, but it didn't. It's still the same, the clutch pack is just stuck. Over time, that's what happens. One of the number one killers of motorcycles is them just sitting, unfortunately. So what we're gonna do is dive into this clutch and replace it. We have brand new steel and fiber plates. We have a new clutch cable. We have some gaskets and some other stuff to look at while we're over there. Obviously, parts for these older bikes are getting harder and harder to find. There are some websites out there that will help you out. CMSNL.com or org or whatever it is is a great place. New old stock parts. Try to keep new old stock parts in these bikes as much as I possibly can. But we're going to toss it in here and see if that fixes the problem. It should 100% fix the problem, but I thought I'd show you guys the process of the way in and out of that system. If you want to learn more about your motorcycle, basic maintenance, adjustments, things that you should be doing to your bike, make sure you grab the free course below. It's a free maintenance course. Me and my buddy Matt over at How To Motorcycle Repair put it together for you. It's a bunch of videos, awesome stuff. It's free. Grab it in the description below. But without further ado, let's rip this thing apart. Please excuse my fan noise, but it's hot. So, these things are kind of a pain to work on because it's just hard to get to stuff. But in order to get this right case off, which is where the clutch lives, the exhaust has to come off. It will make it, because the pipe's kind of hiding some bolts that we need to get to to get this case off. Kicker has to come off. This can probably stay. If we adjust this enough where it's super freeing, we can kind of put it down to the ground. But there's some big bolts that are kind of holding on this bracketry here, this here. We're going to reuse the exhaust gasket. It shouldn't be a problem at all. We'll verify that, obviously, once we're back together. But we have to get this case off. First thing that has to go is this exhaust. So we have a bolt here, main bolt that has to be taken off because of the shield that they put on there from the factory muffler. Following this peg down, you'll see that there are some bolts in there we have to take off as well as the other side to drop that thing down. Once we loosen up and take off those bolts and the footrest bolts, it's just the exhaust header bolts that we have to take off and that pipe can come right off. I get a little bit more play in this rear brake. I'm going to take the adjustment in the back by the tire so that there's two studs that kind of hold this into the motor and yeah that stud right there it's holding that on so you have to kind of like come out and down with it pretty easy. If we wanted to we can undo this spring but that's enough movement for me to get this case off. Let's go ahead and grab this. It's always something. Splines on this might be a little bit janky. It's not coming off all the way cleanly. I'll take a little flathead screwdriver. And kind of just drive that in. Might give us some space. 
There we go. We are going to lose some oil. Let's throw a pan down there. It's going to start water falling out of there once we loosen this thing up a little bit. Manual impact driver with a number three Phillips head so we can get on all these Phillips. This is the best way to get these off. One hit. Break them loose. Grab all these now. Some may be different lengths. Okay, I'll show you guys when we go back together with them. It's fairly simple to know. They all stick out about the same amount. Obviously that one doesn't go there. That one's gonna go there. That one's gonna go there. So on and so forth. They all have the same amount of depth that they kind of hang out. So a lot of the newer stuff, they have little ledges for you to grab a slide hammer on or do something like that. And these old ones, they didn't really care too much about that. So what I like to do is try to find a clean ledge that I could kind of pry from without doing any damage. Which is not easy to do because that gasket is going to be stuck on there like a big dog. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab something like a nice flat back, almost like a chisel, and find a spot where I can kind of enter in at. Little taps. until we hear that pop, that little coconut crunch. And now we're in. We'll let this drain for a little bit. No damage to the case or nothing. It's nice, really, I, I keep this thing real sharp so we can kind of sneak right in there. Like a, almost like a putty knife. Would have been easier to drain the oil, but I don't really care too much. All right. Move this case, it should come off fairly easy. There's our case, not too bad. A lot of sludge likes to build up right down here at the bottom. This black stuff. A lot of times when you get old bikes, this is what you find in the depths of the motor. Way down below you'll find this nasty sludge stuff. This one's not too bad been being ran fortunately but on these and you guys buying these old bikes and stuff that black sludge stuff is what's sitting right down there at the bottom that doesn't work too well when it goes through the oil pump system it'll rear its ugly head eventually but this is not too bad so here we have our clutch system oil pumps down here oil filter screen and we can actually clean out while we're here this gasket should be a lot of fun to get off spent a lot of time scraping this gasket off it's not going to come off cleanly. It's going to rip the entire time. So, which is fine. That's how it is. Here's our oil sling as well. I've already cleaned this thing out previously when I got this bike running for this guy. But in here would be your oil sling. So as oil makes its way through, this is spinning pretty quick. And it, the centrifugal force slings heavy particles out to the outer ring. It has some ribs that kind of help pick it up and keep it in there. Almost like a sleuth for gold mining. It's just That's just kind of how it works. And you can undo the Phillips head screw, pop this out, and there will be some stuff in there. We'll check it while we're here. Again, even though I know it's been cleaned. But here we have our clutch pack. The problem is when I grab my clutch and it open that basket up because it disengages the clutch when I pull the clutch in, that clutch pack is functioning as one pack. These should all be pretty much separate. Yes, even on new bikes, you know, if you were to take a perfectly working clutch apart and you move these around, they may stay together just because of the tension that's in the oil itself that's in the surface tension but not in this bed i can probably try to pry them apart pull the clutch in there we go you can hear them almost wanting to come apart they're stuck so so we'll take these bolts off evenly not one at a time we're going to kind of go around so we're not bending or breaking anything because there is pressure underneath here from these springs and you could crack them very easily by taking one bolt at a time or not doing it evenly enough so we're going to pop these all out and the whole basket should come out with it we should probably have a rod or something in there as well what i like to check for when i'm pulling these out is just to make sure that the threads have not been stretched out when they're reused over and over and over again, someone uses, you know, way too much torque on them, they can stretch these bolts out, and that's never good. We can also measure the free length of these springs to see if they are to spec. Typically they are, unless the clutch has been just completely burned the clutch up, and everything's been overheated, 
the springs will kind of lose their tension. But we'll check the free length on that spring to make sure it's right. Here's our front part here. We have our little push dowel, which connects to a rod on the inside. Doesn't want to come out too easily. Turn this slightly. Ouch! Get this pack out. Kind of in the way of that oil sling. And there's our stuck clutch pack. I can kind of get them apart. Yeah! See the grind that builds up on those steel plates? Ugh. Come on! There we go. Oh yeah. Big time stuck. It should never be this difficult to get plates apart. There. All junk. You can try to reclean the steel plates if you want. I've tried it before, it did not work. I wasted my time making them look all shiny and polished. There is a service limit on these, and even if you clean these steel plates and put new ones in, I just did not have any good luck with it. I just replaced them. Anytime I do a clutch replacement, I'm always replacing the steels and the fibers every time. I don't care who you are or what your name is. That's what I do every time. Other than that, it looks pretty good. We are also looking for any type of wear on top of these fins, on heavy drops, on clutches, and just a lot of wear that takes place on these baskets. You'll find it very heavily worn on these inner parts where the clutch kind of hits when you let the clutch out. A lot of dirt bikes, it happens on very, very lightweight race, racing stuff that can happen. Just heavy wear over time, and it will make a groove kind of down in here. I can kind of feel it, but it's nowhere near as bad as what I've seen before. This is fine. If that groove gets really heavy, you got to replace this entire clutch hub in the back, all right? You'll see them sometimes on the inside of here as well. I don't. It looks great. That whole system looks fine. Remember what I was talking about with that sludge? That's what you see on old bikes all the time. Really thick stuff. The only way to really do anything with that and clean it out is to tear the motor apart fully down to the crankshaft and clean it all out. So there's a little bit of moisture in there probably just from not getting it hot enough when it was started. But that's all sludgy sludge. We'll try to clamp as much as we can to help it out you know and we'll make sure that, that this pickup down here is clean but there's really not much you can do about it unless you feel like replacing or tearing down this entire motor. So now what I'll do is I'll spend the rest of my time rest of the day <laughs> probably taking this gasket off any method it's great try to keep as much damage off of the case as possible sometimes you'll get lucky with a nice piece like that but we're going to be scraping all right always scraping with a razor blade sharp razor blades great um like i said i have this nice little flat putty knife that works pretty well but it's going to leave a lot of papers crap all over the place so i try to cover this kind of stuff up um, and just go to work, man, getting this whole gas off. This, this is going to be the longest part right here. So I was able to get the Honda steel plates, which is really cool. But we did not get um, new old stock or OEM fiber material. So there's a little bit of corrosion on these, but that should be fine. I'm not worried about it. What I'll do is I'll take these, all of them, and I'll set them in the oil while we're doing this. All right. You can fill this bag up with oil if you want, but lay them in a tray, get them soaked in oil, allow them to soak in that oil as long as you possibly can. Um, probably by the time I'm done doing all of this, is plenty of time. 20 to 30 minutes should be fine. Um, this will probably take me about an hour to get all this crap off, so that will be great. The longer you let them sit in oil, the better. This allows that fiber material, that clutch material to soak in that oil, allows it to last a lot longer. So I'll get to work.
do is it's usually take like a green scotch bright pad and I'll just work the same exact flat edge all the way around. If you want to go in there with a razor blade and get around this dowel, um, so sometimes those can be a little bit tricky, but just trying to make a new surface with that scotch bright. I'm trying to clean this up, get some of the slug bits out of there. Still a little bit left in, but nothing that I'm worried about. Um, let's go ahead and pop this oil sling off to see how we're doing. Number three Phillips with the impact driver. Crack that loose. Sometimes these are, there's an O-ring that kind of seals this in. Sometimes they're a little bit of a pain to get out. But because it is threaded, what we can do, so if we go in with an eight millimeter bolt, we can actually thread into just this cover. And I'll grab a pair of needle nose pliers, come on the back side. Sometimes you, you can just pull it out, but if you can't, you can just tap it and kind of slowly drive this thing in. Once it bottoms out, it's now pushing up against that back side and you can just kind of thread this in very slowly and it'll work its way out. Almost like its own puller. I give it some love taps to hopefully open it up a little bit. And there we go. Oil all over my bench. And as you can see, that looks really clean. There is some sludge build up in there, but it's better than metal, I'll tell you that. I've seen some pretty nasty ones, so I'll get some contact cleaner and just clean it out. It's not uncommon to see clutch material in there. It's honestly, it is common to see some metal shavings in there. I mean, these motors are not. There's no other filter in them. They do wear out, and you will see metal shavings, but they just keep on chugging. This one looks awesome. Sometimes you'll find some crud on here. You can clean that off as well. And here you can see what I mean by this thing just kind of works as like a, almost like a gear puller. Threads in, the bigger threads thread in, but the smaller thread that we took out, the Phillips head, threads straight into that crankshaft. I'm gonna throw some oil back onto this O-ring. You can replace that if you'd like. This one's okay. thread our Phillips head screw back in. We can lock this down. Go full right with our impact. One hit. You can do a little snug hit on the end. As for the bottom on the motor where we saw all that crud, same concept with the Q-tips. If you want, you can take this oil pump out, but you'd have to, in order to get this whole oil pump out, this snap ring has to come off if you're pulling off this whole entire section. And really all I want to do is just get anything away from the screen that shouldn't be there. Use a Q-tip, whatever you got. If there's any sludge build up down there, we're just gonna get it away from that screen. I'm not sure if I can have the ability to pop this screen down. I think it's, it gets too hung up on the back side. But we can hit that. What I'll do is I'll take my drain bolt out at this time. Just in case any of that contact cleaner goes into the motor, we'll just let it drain out. There will be more oil that comes out of this, I'm sure. But not much. That way when I'm spraying this, if any of it feeds back, it will also drain down the other side. And this is just a really quick little while we're here type thing. It's not making too big of a difference, but if I can get any uh, oil that's not circulating through the motor and you don't really want it to out, then that's what I'll do. So the way the oil pumps work on these are kind of cool. The way this rotates the motor, 
I don't want to pinch my fingers. Yeah. It's actually functioning an arm behind the plate. Back here, on a plunger system, so it's just pushing and pulling oil in and out constantly as this clutch hub, this gear in the back, rotates. A lot of the old 350s and 450s are like that. Very cool system. Mechanical looking. Looks awesome. I like them. Do they work well? Hard to say, but these bikes are still on the road, so that means something. One thing I also like to do is every motor will have oil passages, how oil feeds in and out of things. One way this motor does it is through means of the case, and many bikes are like that, where oil will travel in, come down into here, make sure this is functioning as well, so relief valve, and it will force its way back out, okay, into a pressurized system to try to make its way the oil from the bottom up to the top, and it do that by this type of means of travel. That oil is getting stepped up as pressure builds, but what we can do is make sure that these passages are clean with uses of compressed air. That's I, I wouldn't spray contact cleaner into oil passages, only if you were disassembling the motor, but if we're out here, we can have an air gun with a nozzle on it and hit certain passages here, like straight into there, and just kind of clear out anything that was in the butt that was in that passage, like a clogged artery in a way. Not saying that there is one, but it helps. In the meantime, I'm gonna clean up this case, get this gasket surface prepared for this. We're gonna blow through those oil passages real quick, and then we will assemble this clutch and put it back together and see if it worked. Just in case, I like to cover the stuff up so it doesn't blow back at me. You see it's coming right out here. Awesome. We have our little push piece that goes back in, goes back on that rod inside. I put a little bit of Molly, Molly 60 paste. It's metal on metal surface. It's not going to damage the motor. It's good stuff. You can use any assembly lube or whatever oil even is fine. Um, see the surface of this plate that comes here. You can see it's kind of darkened, but it's not, and you can't feel that. All right. So there's no point in me spending the time to make it look brilliant again. It's it feels fine, very, very smooth, and we're gonna run with it. My plates have been soaking in oil, overnight actually, so those are good to go. The way that this clutch goes on obviously matters, right, because we have our metal backing plate here, our front plate has a space for friction to go up against, so we don't, we don't wanna put metal against that, that'd be pointless. We wanna go back up against the fiber, and then we'll go in cadence of metal, fiber, metal, fiber, metal, fiber, all the way. The way that these fiber plates come off, if you notice when you take these off and you feel these clutch plates, you'll notice that they have a beveled edge, like a rounded edge, and then a flat edge, okay? The flat edge is facing me, all right? So if you feel on your new ones, it has a very flat surface and then a rounded surface. The flat surface is gonna be facing me. And because there's oil on the plates already, I'm not gonna oil these as well. They'll be in contact with the plate, and it's going to drip down as we install. Bingo. That's all we got. Five fiber plates and five metal plates. Here's the part number for those steel plates in case you're wondering. Before we put these on, I told you that we would check the free length of these. The book. I eventually found the spec 28.2, I believe, is the replacement spec, which they're calling, which is likely in like a new service menu, would be called the service limit. They're saying a the replacement limit. 28.2 here, we're registering at around 29.2, 29, almost 29.3. So we are above spec, which is great. Some of them are a little bit different. There's, there's 29.4. Regardless, we're in spec with these things. They're not worn out. We're good to go. I'll tell you what, those old manuals, I would say you'd have to be probably more mechanically inclined to understand what the heck they're talking about and be able to rebuild a motor from back then with what little information they gave you. That's pretty impressive. I'm going to throw a little bit more Molly right on the front of this. A little bit of engine oil as well. Just kind of mix it all in. Throw our plate back on, it's not matter what orientation it goes in. Throw our springs on. 
we have our spring plate right here. A little crusty on the outside. Might take the scratch bright to that. Cool thing about working on motorcycles and repairing your own stuff is you get the satisfaction of making things better than they were when you first saw them, you know? That's what's so cool about repairing things, obviously. But so doing tiny dumb stuff like this does not matter at all to the function of this motor, but it's better than it was when it came in. So why not? I'm not gonna put any Loctite on these, I'm just gonna use straight up oil. Straight up. Oil, what that does to threads when you go to tighten them down is it, it gives you a more precise tightening. The torque on these is so small. I mean, it's tiny. I'm talking like five foot pounds. It's small stuff. Um, but the oil allows it to kind of sit in there a little bit better. There's no resistance of the metal on metal contact between the threads. Oil will make it, I would, I would say, more accurate. But you only want to do it with certain stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to throw oil on someone's axle bolt and tighten it down with a torque wrench. All right, like we did coming off, we'll go back on kind of in a organized fashion. I tighten them down by hand. Again, it's not a lot. If you want to use a torque wrench, you can, but I have a good idea of where these should be at. All right, so now, put the case on. What you can do is clean up the surface real well. We have a fresh gasket to go on. I'm only going to use silicone on the mating side, so right, right there where the two cases meet horizontally, and over on this side as well. Not a lot, just a little. Help me hold the gasket on there as well. Did find a little bit of dirt on this. I'm going to use some of these grip clean wipes who do sponsor my videos. If you guys want to get some pretty awesome hand cleaners, while you're out in the garage and don't require water, you can just clean your hands right off. They work really well. These also work pretty well for cleaning this stuff up. After you're done washing your hands with them, you can grab some dirt. If you want to pick some up in the description of the video, there's a link. If you use Moto MD at checkout, they'll give you 10% off. Pretty awesome company. They have hand cleaner, wipes, dog soap, all kinds of stuff. All right, so the final push. Contact cleaner, our cleanest rag. Do one last pass around the surface. Remove any oil residue that was there. Some ultra gray RTV. It's a little bit right here on this surface. Thin it out. Put a little bit around this dowel, go over on this side, get this surface up right here. Those are my only two concerns. Fresh gasket. There we go. Fits nice and snug. I love it. You love to see it. If you want to keep it in one place a little bit better, feel free to put a little bit of gasket material on the top of that if you want, but that's fine. The dowel's holding it in. It's holding it in over on this side. We're good to go. All right, we're gonna double check everything. We tighten that down. We tighten these down. We have our push pin in the back of that. We've cleaned out some areas that we could. The case is clean. The bypass is clean up front. Clutch packs are in. We're good to go. What I will do is put a little bit of grease on this right here. Just some assembly lube. Because it is riding on that seal when you kickstart it. I have a tendency to leak. No problem. Alright, let's throw our case on. Get this dial pin in first. We're in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw this all back together. Assembly is in the reverse of removal, and we'll see if this thing's still stuck.
can't forget the Earl. We need a GN 41040. Now, our last thing we need to do is we need to readjust this clutch. We've added plates that are not worn out, like these ones were. So more free play is taken up out of the control, so we gotta make some adjustments there. And this clutch adjuster is bent like crazy. I think get that off of there. I think I might have a spare one I can throw in. And trying to align these two things. There we go. Throw a little spit on this. Right where it turns, a little bit on the mating surface. There we go, now we can bring this thing all the way back in. Got some good free play there. If it was still locked up tight like that, I'd probably go down to the bottom adjustment and make my adjustment there, but we'll see how this does, because that's good free play, I like that. All the way in, let's try it. Alright, well, moment of truth, got oil in it. Good free play. You know it runs. All right guys, so that will wrap this one up. That is a successful repair. Clutch was stuck, replace it, quick adjustment, get it all cleaned up. Took it for a test right around the block a couple times, it's awesome. This thing runs fantastic. Might need a little cam chain adjustment, maybe a smaller adjustment on the clutch, but other than that, the problem is solved. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you did. Like it, subscribe to the channel. We do motorcycle videos all the time. And again, if you want help, basic maintenance and adjustments and repairs that you can do on your motorcycle right now, I have a course for you. It's free in the description below. We'll lead you straight to it. But until next time, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you next time. Later.